So the visitors or the pedestrians which walk by and the zebra process because mostly the projects take some time to, 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 um, to create. So, um, so people also follow the process, so they ask what is going on. And so people are much more already uh, involved in the process when they just would have done, uh, seen something which is just put there. The sheer absurdity of of the objections of the uh, from uh, from the the company that, that owns the uh, the billboard. Um, on the one hand, I mean the uh, a message from Edgar Heap of Birds, uh, very in, in your face, very um, um, uh, upfront about co colonialism and the residential school legacy. I mean, it's we weren't really surprised that this would be a problem. I mean, you have to be disingenuous to be surprised mm -hmm. that people might have a problem with this. But then a message from Larissa Lai, but, but even if there's a problem, still it's censorship. But that's the thing that in public, things go on in public that we don't all want to do or agree with, but uh, we, uh, I think we have the idea that we want to allow more of that to happen rather than to it's based on a radial design, so every cut's the same. Like every piece, there might be four components in the whole bridge, maybe six, and they're all cut exactly the same. And so it just goes together. If you kept going, it would just make a circle. And so you just decide where to knock it off. Did you approach the city and say, I'm doing this, or was this a private project which later became so-called public art? Yeah, it's a, it's a definitely a, a private project. And it, the city was never approached at any time. I mean. You know, it's not really the, the bridge department or like, hey, I, I'm a casual guy, I want to build a casual bridge. So I just left all that, you know, I know enough about that not even to even bother. Just gonna live a crazy life, cause it's one to play, but it's two to ride. Certainly the architect, distinguished architect, Barry Downs and others, had wanted a, a, a memorable termination of that street. The screens that you mentioned were perforated, and the notion being that the pattern cast by the perforated images would reach their point of highest registration on the ground on the anniversary date of the images depicted in the screen. Uh, one of the more amusing things to me was, of course, uh, I, uh, let me put it this way, I think that was one of the more theoretical aspects of the piece. Uh, which in practice um, uh, does not perform as well as, as hoped. Uh, for one reason, uh, as you've mentioned, there's a great deal of shadow and rain in Vancouver, uh, and there's often no shadow at all to be seen on the ground. I've never been there when I've thought that it was working. I also thought that the steel structures, which I realize that they are meant to uh, you know, refer back to the kind of industry that was there, but they actually look like some kind of uh, Stalinist-era Soviet you know, propaganda sculpture. I mean, it's, it's like the pieces there with its, uh, you know, sort of, you know, somewhat dynamic diagonal, you know, pieces of steel, and it's just lacking a big bronze statue of the supreme leader leading us onwards or something, you know. It's quiet out here, but we don't need any more sound. Do you remember the just a word? The work of art is a so strong experience for me. Sometimes I feel I didn't do that. It's uh, naive, but sometimes I do feel that the, the work is much stronger than my little brain can imagine. The uh, East Bank logo, if I can call it that, was always this piece of graffiti that appeared and reappeared very sporadically ever since I was, as long as I can remember. It would appear in the backs of uh, grocery stores, 
sometimes spray painted, sometimes with a marker pen, sometimes with chalk on the sidewalk. And what I was always interested in was how it was never formalized. I mean, it's been formalized now because it's become kind of chic as a kind of symbol. And so you see it on even t-shirts, I guess, and so on, on coffee cups, right? But it was never formalized for a long, long time. And, uh, and yet it somehow survived. They had this kind of life, this kind of organicism, which I was interested in. I always saw this as a sign of kind of backwards pride. Uh, Ken Lam, the artist, denies that there's anything, uh, that there's any pride involved. He said it was always about what the East Side was not, that it was, uh, um, compared to other parts of the city, it was uh, not as wealthy, it was not as rich. And this was really about rebellion and about an assertion of identity, but not pride. When something has that kind of uh, um, durability, I would say it has a kind of um, pathology. I think it expresses something that some kind of uh, motivation among people to keep it alive. Part of these chairs were installed on English Bay and the board, most of them were destroyed, uh, I think, during the first week. Uh, it, it, it was not in a way, you know, when, when you put a public work in, in a place people don't want them, it's hard to, to, to keep it there. People will destroy it. If you put it in an environment where people like to be around the work, it's all, it's all a different thing. 